G'day dudes, welcome to the Shane Shed. Obviously, I'm Shane. Uh, today, I'm going to be just doing a little job that I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, now that Perth's on a four day lockdown for the moment, uh, I can't fly to work, so I figured I'll hit this one little job that's been sitting around for a while and I've uh, got some parts to do it, so let's get into it. Okay, so I've got a old air suspension compressor from my D3, now this is a high touch unit. Uh, I've hung on to this just as a spare because I figured I'll rebuild it at some point. Uh, when I removed it, uh, I had done the desk in, uh, but we'll open that up and have a look uh, and just show you how to replace the desk in these. Uh, it does turn to dust, it goes through the whole system, so the desk in is stored in this uh, unit, so, so you got your line that comes in from the the compressor in here these are quite easy just put a bit of pressure in hold these down and just pull out if you just try and pull them straight out they don't come so come out so just hold that little tab in and they come out quite easily and then just remove this end cover now these end covers here are kind of notorious for cracking uh, I do have a replacement Aluminium one. I can't remember why I didn't put this on last time, uh, but I'll have a go at refitting it this time. Let's see how we go. Uh, and like I said, this desk was changed out uh, previously when this compressor had problems. Uh, I done a service then. When I pulled it out, I found the piston and barrel were quite badly worn so I had, I'd purchased a full rebuild kit for it uh, which included all the piston seal, uh, replacement desk and all that sort of stuff uh, replaced what I could and put it back in and it still didn't run so I uh, ended up replacing it with a new unit and I figured I'd just keep this one for a spare because I knew this day would probably come where I'd do something like this with it. So, there's an O-ring that holds all this in here, which is quite tight. Got a spring, and then a, uh, and just a plate with a little filter in it that holds all the desk in behind that. So that needs to be removed. I think it's just a... So basically on the bottom half, you got uh, the plate with the filter, top half you've got another sort of felt filter, and another filter with a plate, and then desk and sandwiches between that. Anyway, now that the, uh, the desk out, let's rip into the rest of it. So there's just a uh, little Phillips head screw just on this side, just undo that, and then that whole dryer can just twist off and remove. It should be able to pull straight off. So in order to pull the piston and barrel part, just going on my memory here, so if we take this end plate off, we should be able to expose the bottom of the, uh, the con rod. And unbolt that from there. There, you can see there's just a bolt in there. Uh, so we'll just, now that uh, we've got the discharge off the compressor, I'll just pull that head off. So it should be just these four bolts here. Uh, the whole lot should just lift off. Now, when I replace this, I will end up going for a, just another Hitachi style. I'll end up putting the, the, uh, the Dunlop one on. Uh, mainly because at the time it was a bit cheaper, uh, but these things, you know, you had the option to replace it with a, the AMK or the stick with the Hitachi style. I just choose to stay with this one, uh, mainly just because I had a, 
you know, the option to rebuild these. Uh, I think these are a bit more rebuildable than the AMK. Uh, and I don't know if the uh, if they any more reliable or not, really. So, uh, you can see the uh, all the valve arrangement. There's just a simple uh, little plate. But we'll, uh, I don't know how well this will show up on camera. I'll move the light a little bit and see what we can see. But uh, it is actually it's quite badly worn, especially in this section here. You can probably see that quite well. It's quite scalloped out. So yeah. Not too flash at all. Just gonna have to lock the crank up somehow. So I just may throw this in and hopefully that's enough, which seems to be. This new piston glide ring and wasn't in for very long at all. Just long enough to know that it wasn't going to do the job. Uh, yeah, this just the piston's just way too too much slop in there. At the time, I was hoping it might have worked. For now, I have a new barrel to go in. I've got a new glide ring. Now I've got a new Conrod, a new piston. Because uh, this piston is fairly shagged, really. You can see where the old piston has been running on the bore. There's a little focus there. And all this come unassembled. Uh, it's all pretty easy stuff to put together. So I'm just going to try getting this piston in, well obviously without trying to damage that top ring too much. Got started. Should be able to get that glide ring in under that for the time being. That's just getting tight as well. Push that in. So that's in properly now. Bolt that Conrod back up. You can just use something to cam that up so you can tighten that big end. Make sure you got the O ring up the top of your. Now that's all 
back in together. I'm just going to give this a quick test run. Uh, we just use the main power lead in, uh, just up to the battery. So this seems to test run okay. Uh, it seems to be able to, when I hold my finger over there, it seems to be pumping out enough pressure. So we'll uh, just whack it all back together. Uh, I'm going to have to, I don't have any replacement desiccant at the moment, so that'll be something I'll just have to do a little bit later. But that's a pretty easy, easy task. So. We'll put everything else back. So the replacement barrel and piston uh, actually kind of hard to find now. Uh, originally, when this uh, failed, oh, easy to get. Now, not so much. So I think at some point there's maybe a if that barrel or piston stuff then. Uh, that might be harder to repair these, but for now, uh, as long as you keep that barrel in good nick, uh, it should be okay. Most of the overhaul kits will contain all your desk and new piston seals. So normally. This will be where we'll uh, filter out what we're going first. That's not sitting square. Pull it down flat, there we go. I felt in then I don't know how much you'll see. You can see sort of the descant line. So it's probably roughly about a little bit over half full of descant. And then on top, it's just that felt, next felt plate, which holds it all in place, spring, which keeps the pressure on it. And then your end cap, uh, whether you use the plastic or replacement aluminium. Uh, I'll probably try using the replacement aluminium this time. I said, I think last time the that o ring on it may have been a bit tight. I can't, but uh, that's you know, dramas. I may be able to swap it out for this one if it fits any better, but yeah, we'll leave that for next time. But Hey okay, guys, so that's pretty much it for uh, rebuilding these compressors. They're really simple, uh, there's not much to it. Uh, yeah, hopefully it uh, gives you a little bit of insight on what's inside them. As long as the, uh, the piston seals and the barrel stay in good condition, you should be able to keep on rebuilding them. So yeah, I'd probably keep an eye on the, the servicing on these, uh, because if that piston and barrel does fail then and you can't get a replacement, uh, you probably may end up throwing these out. I mean as it is the replacements you've got they definitely feel like they're not as good a quality as the original so we'll see how it goes but anyway we'll uh, leave it off here so don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Uh, I read all the comments and uh, respond to as many as I can. So anyway until next time take it easy guys. See ya.